This is the Creality CR30, aka Naomi Wu's 3D print mill, and it's a really unique and useful in its own way 3D printer. The thing is, the ways in that it is useful are also some of the flaws that make it a, a, a weird printer to use. And today we're gonna see if I can fix those with a bit of a hardware mod. But before that, this video is sponsored by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter with hand curated news on tech, finance, and business. Don't start out your day by giving yourself FOMO from browsing social media. Just read Morning Brew instead. It's a five minute read with just the right balance of information and wit that manages to bring you up to speed and put you in a good mood at the same time. For example, did you know that the average prices for NFTs have already come way down? Not everything that's being sold is a $69 million people piece. On the other hand, memed up stocks like GameStongs are still way up from their original pre-meme state. It's hard to keep the big picture in view, but Morning Brew easily breaks it down for you. So if you're interested in business, finance, or tech, sign up to Morning Brew. It takes 15 seconds, it's free, so check out the link in the description. Thanks, Morning Brew. So let me start out with what this actually is. So as you can see, it's a, you know, it has a belt. It has a belt that actually feeds the print out from away from the, from the tool head. And to understand how the kinematics work, I think the easiest way to do it is to imagine this as a regular Core XY printer, because this platform up top is a Core XY platform. And then you have the bed that is angled at 45 degrees and actually slides out under your print head. So in practice, that means that, you know, every print that you print is, like this Benchy, is angled out at 45 degrees. Um, that means that the side that is facing towards the nozzle prints perfectly, like any sort of overhang on this side, absolutely awesome. But as soon as you're facing away from the nozzle, as soon as you go further than, you know, 90 degrees to the belt, it's already, at, at that 90 degree point, it's already a 45 degree overhang. And that can be solved with things like support material or optimizing a model specifically to be printed on this 45 degree angle platform. But I mean, it does limit what you can print and printing at 45 degrees is pretty extreme. The other thing about this printer is the belt itself. Now, this obviously is not a PEI surface or, you know, something that you could apply glue stick or should apply glue stick to. I mean, you can, but it's kind of messy. And the belt with the CR30 has been a bit of its weak spot. So I think one of the main reasons why I've not been using it as much as some of the other folks you may have seen using it is that the first belt that I got with it, um, this one is actually one that has a very low adhesion. I could almost not get stuff to stick to it. I mean, you can see the, the parts that I tried printing with it, but everything that I printed just has like massive curls and massive warping to it to a point where it's not that usable anymore in a lot of cases. People like Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, got a different belt that was on the other extreme of adhesion. So mine was very low adhesion, Joel's was extremely high adhesion to a point where the belt was almost ripping itself up. Now this belt is a sort of a happy medium between those two extremes of sticking not enough and sticking too much, but it's still like adhesion is still difficult. And that is because the hot end is not actually pushing filament into the belt. It's not like pushing it against the grain of the belt because this is like a nylon texture. It's actually more or less sliding the filament over the belt if you're unlucky, if your distance is not perfect. So you can't really see it in the finished print, but yeah, bed adhesion is kind of tricky in a lot of cases, especially if you have small details. What I already did is I've already bent the tool head into the belt so that it pushes it more into the belt material itself, which is not perfect for geometry. It helps a bit. So what we're gonna try today is to fix both of those issues. And that is by, well, I guess technically tilting the bed up so that the angle between the tool head and the belt surface is not as steep anymore. I'm gonna transfer this from 45 degrees to 15 degrees. So to do that, ow, we could of course angle the belt up, but we can also take the XY gantry and angle it down. So we're gonna build a uh, CR30 lowrider today. The first step is measuring out all the dimensions on this. Thankfully, this is pretty simple and I've modeled up a few adapter pieces that we're gonna install. Let's go.
and that's the conversion done. Now, this was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, the trickiest part was actually finding spots for uh, the spool mount, the filament sensor, the extruder, and the screen, because like the original spots now don't have the space for them anymore. But I think it turned out really cool looking. I mean, it kind of resembles a Polaroid camera, I think, but overall, you know, it's just so low. It's it's such a such a compact looking printer. Now, of course, the maximum build volume has reduced by quite a bit. So the maximum clearance here is about 62 millimeters, and it's quite far forward. And at that point, it is already off of the heated bed area. So you're printing on something that is already on the cooling plate. We're gonna have to see if that makes a difference. But in theory, this is all there is to the conversion. All I'm gonna need to do is to set the zero point, basically the homing switch, so that the nozzle distance to the belt is correct, and change the angle in the slicer. So here it is, it's done and it's printing. The mechanical conversion was actually way easier than I thought it was gonna be. In the front here, I shortened these uh, 2040 profiles, but yeah, even with this newer piece, it is still super rigid. Like the CR30 just by itself is an incredibly rigid machine and it still is even with these printed parts. Um, the one thing that I could maybe have changed is uh, making this entire frame a bit higher up so that the nozzle contacts uh, the belt further back right now it's pretty far forward but you know I could also just lower um, the belt itself. The other cool thing is that there are no firmware changes needed on this printer at all because the you know the firmware doesn't know that this is a belt printer it just thinks it's a it's a core xy machine with a very long z-axis the belt itself is the z-axis and firmware so that works totally fine actually. Um, I changed the angle in the slicer and it was printing sort of let's start with a belt adhesion so this was one of the prints um, done with 15 degrees i actually ran into a bug in creality's belt slicer which is a fork of the black belt slicer where the very first line that touches the belt is actually super over extruded and then it just digs through that filament and starts peeling it off so that's a bit of a problem i ended up solving that by just pinching the extruder and keeping it from feeding filament on that first line and it's also not that much of an issue with prints that have like a curved start um, where that first that very first line is just a really small section. Now what was throwing me off a bit too is the fact that these parts kind of didn't stick all too well when they were printed at 15 degrees. So you can see that none of these benches at 15 degrees actually completed and that is because I think it that you know they started moving um, at about this height and the nozzle got caught. So that I think is uh, due to the fact that the lines on the bottom are just there's just less lines contacting the bit because that spacing is so much further apart than it is with 45 degrees. So bed adhesion, while it could be better with the 15 degree mod, in practice with the bugs from the slicer and the fact that while well, the slicing itself is kind of weird, we're gonna get to that in a second, um, overall didn't make it much better in belt adhesion. 
It might also just be this belt itself, um, the fact that it doesn't stick to PLA all that well. This is a PTG print and that did stick rather well. Like this is perfectly stuck down. This is the base of the Armel, the Polar Paladin uh, print. And this is just, this is not coming off. Hmm. I guess the PTG did end up sticking a bit too well to the belt. Really with this print we can see most of the issues that we're having with the slicer set to 15 degrees. The way you should be thinking about these printers is, you know, this is a regular, let me turn this off, this is a regular Core XY platform with the belt that is kind of, with the bit that is kind of sliding out underneath the print. The problem with the slicing is that it doesn't quite work that way. The slicer doesn't see the print just as a, you know, tipped up part. What the input to the slicer is internally, the way that it's set up, is a way distorted model that is completely out of whack, that is distorted at those 45 or 15 degrees in this case, and then the machine itself undistorts it by having basically the bed moving out underneath the print. So that causes some issues. Like if you have a horizontal or a vertical wall, that still prints fine if it's just 45 degrees off. It's just an overhang, right? But as soon as you're at 15 degrees, that doesn't quite work anymore. Two areas specifically that are causing problems, uh, that is top surfaces and bottom surfaces and the infill itself. Like you can see on surfaces that are horizontal, those print well because this to the slicer or to the printer is a 75 degree overhang that is padded with info. Like that works, right? The problems start when you get slopes and uneven surfaces because by nature, the slicer tries to pad those surfaces underneath so that you get a closed uh, surface on top. The problem here is that, you know, where the slicer tries to pad is not where it actually needs to pad because each layer is shifted by 0.7 millimeters. So over a millimeter, you have almost four millimeters of a shift. So that padding ends up in the wrong spots. And the same is true for the infill itself. So you can see this is infill that's just lines at uh, custom angles at six and negative six degrees. And those mostly stack on top of each other. But if you have cubic infill or gyroid infill or anything that is not like oriented along the direction where the belt is feeding, you're gonna have real issues getting that to line up and it's just not gonna overlap uh, at all. It's just gonna be a mess on the inside of your print. So while that approach of pre-skewing your models before it gets sliced works for 45 degree printers, at 15 degrees, that approach really starts falling apart and I don't think this is practically usable at all. And I mean, it makes sense that most belt printers are, you know, either 30 degrees where this stuff still mostly works or 45 degrees, which really is the easy one um, as far as the software goes. I still think this is a better approach if you have short models that aren't taller than 65 millimeters in this case. There, there really needs to be a different approach to the way that the slicing software handles this. So yeah, I'm still gonna keep this at the 15 degree configuration and I'm gonna keep experimenting with, you know, getting these prints to work. And it's really been one of those cases where you can't really see all the stuff that's gonna come up unless you actually do it. So I hope you found this experiment, uh, this process interesting. I certainly learned a lot. If you liked the video, you know, give it a like, share it wherever you wanna share it. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, get subscribed first of all, that's free. Uh, or if you wanna throw me a buck or two a month, uh, you can do so on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Thank you all for watching, keep on making, and I will see you later. Bye.